Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to The 100 Report. I'm Chris. I'm Charlie. And today we are back doing some interviews. We have got a really, really special interview, haven't we? I'm so excited for this one because it's really nice now the competition is literally a week away from starting to get to know a couple of the players and what each team really stands for. So we were lucky enough to get uh, an amazing player from the women's squad and an amazing player from the men's squad of the Northern Superchargers. We had a lovely chat with Lauren Winfield-Hill and Bryden Koss. But before you start, if you're not subscribed to us yet, please do on all of that stuff underneath. And we are on Instagram at The 100 Report and Twitter at 100 Report. Right, that's it for the plugs. Enjoy the interview, because we sure did. Okay, um, welcome to The 100 Report, uh, Bryden Koss and Lauren Winfield-Hill. Um, thank you so much for joining us and thanks for taking time out of your no doubt busy schedule to join us. Not a problem. Great to be here. Awesome. Guys, we are so excited. The competition finally launches next week. It's been so long in the waiting. We're really excited. Chris and I are both attending the first game. Um, have you guys got together as a team yet? Bryden, I know you must have just finished duties with England. Have you got together as a team yet for the Northern Superchargers? No, oh, I'm actually I'm traveling down to Manchester this weekend. I've got a couple of T20 games to finish off with Durham. And then on Sunday evening, I'm traveling down to Leeds and uh, catching up with everyone on Monday afternoon. That's when the group gets together. So looking forward to that. When does training start, Lauren? Um, we meet up, we actually meet up as a group tomorrow. So the overseas are in town, so I've, I've caught up with them. Um, but we start our sort of cricket preparations from tomorrow. So that's exciting, pulling everyone together and getting your new kit and um, yeah, getting stuck into some prep. So it'll be good. Well, that actually was one of the questions I wanted to ask in terms of, um, well, obviously this is a, a, a franchise based game um, and Lauren, especially because you've been involved in the big bash league. Um, how does that work as far as franchise cricket and building the team camaraderie kind of effectively from, uh, from scratch? Yeah, it's, it, it's got to happen pretty fast. You've basically got a week or 10 days to, to sort of prepare um, and gel as a team and come together. I mean, you know, when I've played in Big Bash, I've flown in with two or three days before the first game. So it's always pretty hectic. Um, but I think, you know, we're quite lucky. Um, and if you look at the men's team as well, there's sort of like, there's a, there's a cluster of players that have played together for, for Yorkshire or for us, you know, in the Super League before that. Um, so we sort of have a core group of players that we keep together that are familiar. Um, and then obviously with your with your overseas and with some of the girls that have come from from other counties to to obviously represent the superchargers, it's just getting getting up to speed with with learning those you know and getting to know those new faces. Um, but we're pretty lucky, you know. Like we've got Jemima, who's who's obviously played for us before. Um, I know Laura Wolfart a bit from from Big Bash and obviously playing against her a lot in international cricket. So. Yeah, you just you're just working really hard to to get to know people pretty quickly. Yeah, I can imagine that must be the case. Um, I, I I know uh, Laura Wolfard is definitely a, a personal favourite of mine. Her cover drives are just exquisite. Um, <laughs> but I guess it's also about building your own, uh, I guess, kind of brand of camaraderie, so to speak. Because I know if you play in the Big Bash League, the teams are uh, already relatively established. Whereas here, it's about developing something effectively from day one. Is that an exciting prospect for you? Yeah, it is exciting. I think it's, I guess it's developing something that you can all just live and breathe by and, and hold yourself accountable to. Um, and not forgetting that this competition is all about having fun and enjoying, you know, enjoying playing together, enjoying playing an exciting, um, entertaining brand of cricket. But um, yeah, it's just bringing, it's just having something that brings you all together, um, that represents you as a group. Uh, I think we're quite a passionate group, so um, that's always something that we really try and, um, I guess, hold on to and not lose just because you have new faces. Um, but yeah, it, it's something that brings you all together and that ties into how you want to play your cricket and, and sort of live and die by that brand. Um, so that's something like we meet we meet tomorrow and the first hour and a half is is a bit of a meeting, bringing everyone together, sort of um, going through that all that stuff. Um, and having a bit of a team meeting in, in what you know what what are we trying to do what what would success look for, look like for us 
um, and how we're going to do that. And Lauren, you mentioned a couple of your teammates just there. Were you happy with the end result with the superchargers? What do you think your strengths are as a team? Yeah, really happy. I think, um, you know, it's obviously a shame that some of the Australians pulled out, but I think in we were quite lucky in some senses that Healy gave us a heads up quite early and we were really we were really happy with our replacements. Um, you know, Laura Wolfhart's been in as good touch as anyone and did really well in the big bash. Like if any any Australian supporters would know how damaging Laura Kimmins can be. Um and then obviously we've got we've got our locals who we've been together with for a while. We know each other, we trust each other, we back we back each other um, when we're out there. So that's really important. I think I think we've got a nice blend. We've got some really, really good spinners um, and we've got a bit of firepower with our batting. Um, and I think those things are going to be really important. I think spin's going to play quite a key role. Um, and I'm, yeah, like I said, I, I think we've, we've managed to, to pull together a really strong squad. Um, and I'm really pleased with, you know, who we've definitely got on our side. And Bryden, same question to you. Who are you most looking forward to working with and why in your squad? Yeah, look, I think um, it's going to be exciting to play with, with all the new overseas players that are coming in. You know, um, Chris Lynn, an explosive um, Australian batter that has played around um, in many franchise tournaments around the world, as well as um, Ajib. Um, and then obviously our replacement for Aaron Finch was Faf Dupasi, you know, someone that is, again, has again has played uh, enormous amounts of international cricket um, and that has played you know in, in tournaments around the world and and again I think um, our local players you know we've got quite a few players from Yorkshire um, so that's always good and then and then and then a couple of boys from Durham and as well I think we've got all bases covered you know we've got some very strong seam bowling options um, we've got three very good spinners. And, and we've got explosive batting up top, you know, the likes of um, Chris Lynn, uh, you know, and uh, Faf Duplessis, uh, Tom Cola cadmore um, you know, there's, there's a lot of firepower up there. Well, obviously looking slightly ahead to the first match that the Northern Superchargers are going to be playing uh, against the Welsh Fire. So looking directly to that first one, um, I'll go to you first, Bryden. Are there any uh, any batsmen that are giving you pause for thoughts? Any ones you think um, uh, th this one's going to be uh, this one's going to be a tough challenge? Uh, you're going to have to post by a batsman or. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, uh, for for the starts, you've got uh, well, you have uh, Ollie Pope's obviously injured, but you've got um, Tom Banton and Johnny Bairstow at the top of the order uh, for starts. Um, Fortunately for some, Karen Pollard um, is, uh, is pulled out injured, but you've definitely got an explosive opening pair. Yeah, look, obviously I've played against um, Johnny a couple of times now, uh, playing for Durham against Yorkshire. He's obviously a world-class batter. I think the biggest thing, you know, whenever we play against explosive batters from all the teams, um, it's just sticking to your plan and just backing your skills. You know, it's... I like to think that T20 cricket is a batsman's game. You know, it's... It's in their favour. So um, as long as you're backing yourself and, and whatever options you're going with as a bowler, you know, are you giving 100%? Um, but yeah, look, it's going to be great to test, to test myself against, against the likes of those players and uh, many more throughout the competition. Fab. And uh, yeah, uh, Lauren, same, same question. Any, uh, any bowlers keeping you up at night? Is the, is the thought of Sarah Taylor back behind the sticks uh, giving you pause to stay in your crease? <laughs> Yeah, obviously, um, Sarah's a world-class player. I think it's great for the competition that she's back, actually. Um, I think that's worth recognising. Um, but I think, you know, in a competition like this, you look at every team's got world-class players, both, you know, the international signings and a lot of really good domestic cricketers we've seen over the last few years, that, like, women's cricket's gone through the roof with the inclusion of all the domestic contracts. Um so everyone, every team's got something to be feared, and that's that's the beauty of the competition. Um, I think you know, like like Brian was saying, it's the the bit that's important when you're playing these teams is remembering what you do well as a player and as a team, and what our strengths are. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, hundred ball cricket. If if someone has a good day, um, good day out with the bat or the ball, then 
you know, it's going to be it's going to be a really good contest. But I think that's that's the great thing is it just ta- it just takes one person to have a good day out. Um, you go hot, you go hot with the bat. Um, you pick up three or four with the ball. Um, you've every you've every chance of your team winning. So there's definitely there's obviously players that we're wary of. Um, but I think it's just staying in your your bubble and sticking to your strengths and staying together as a team and and living like I say living by that brand that we've been quite lucky to create um, obviously over the Super League and then and then moving into this competition. So I think every game is going to be a good game. I think that's the that's the thing when you look at all the squads. Um, you, you literally can't call anything, and and that's exactly what you want from a competition. Couldn't agree more. Exactly. It's going to be super exciting. Lauren, you've got those 100 balls. Do you just go for it from the first delivery? Do you just tee off and see what happens? It's funny, actually, because I had a hit yesterday. Um, and it's funny how much, like, in your mind, you're thinking it's it's such a shorter game. Um, I actually think it probably was the, was the opposite, where I was, like, just going nuts from ball one um, and then sort of recognise, like, it's, it's only 20 balls less. Um, I don't think you know. I don't think it's too different. I think you just um, you just go harder earlier, but it doesn't mean that you have to hit your first ball for six. Um, and I think it's just getting that balance with. I know a few teams that have played warm up games and stuff is they they're suddenly thinking that it's so much shorter than a T Twenty cricket, and you've got to change your game and go like crazy hard from the start. Um, and I think actually balancing that is going to be a real challenge is, is that aggression. Um, and, you know, when, when you go and when you actually, you sort of, you know, you might, you might have a phase where you, you're knocking it around for twos and you're not trying to hit every ball out of the ground. Um, and I think that's going to be a real learning curve for everyone because like I know from just going into the nets is it's like, oh my God, we've got to get going from absolute ball one. Um, and actually, you know, you can still take a couple of balls to, to have a look and, and get yourself in. Um, but I do think you'll see teams initially go super hard and it'll go one way or the other. So do you think that's part of your captaincy tactics then? The game plan actually not to lose your head and to keep sort of cool and sort of envisage it's almost like a T20 format uh, and not go crazy at the beginning? I think it's just identifying key moments like there might be it, it's not different tactically in terms of there might be a bowler that you fancy taking down more than you know who's bowling from the other end um or there might be periods where you're like actually they're bowling well up top here um and you might you know you might look to go really big in the last 40 balls um I think that's it the hard thing is you know like where you have having a uh, an analyst and stuff and it's like you've got no idea what a good score is like t20 cricket one day cricket you know sort of what you're generally looking for nowadays um whereas obviously this is is this a completely blank playing field so you don't actually know what a good score is or what a pass score is um is that quite refreshing in a way yeah it's a good challenge it's a good unknown um i think by the first few games you'll obviously get a feel for it but yeah, like like you say, it's the unknown. That's the exciting bit. Is is who knows what it will sort of bring. Well, fab. And well, moving to Bryden and from a, a bowler's perspective, you already mentioned that uh, shortest and shorter form cricket is um, uh, quote unquote a batsman's game. Um, but as far as things like the fielding positions, I know that one of the things that uh, our listeners are curious to know is about the difference in field restrictions. I don't know if that's been elucidated but in terms of those field restrictions and the potential of a batsman coming at you um what does that do as far as uh, setting your field and uh, changing things on the fly does it make you slightly more aware of your tactics from ball to ball yeah look i think obviously like lauren said i think in the grand scheme of things i, th- I don't think there's obviously a short amount of balls but i think your tactics are going to be very similar to t20 cricket you know, so generally I'll have bowled, you know, and over up front and then generally used through the middle. So my tactics through the middle will, I don't think they'll change. Um, I think I'll still have my certain, you know, fielders out in certain positions and stick to stick to what I do best and then obviously adapt as the game goes on. Um, I think, you know, the challenge will be and 
this is going to have to be up to Lauren as well because she's captaining her side. Uh, is is whether she keeps a bowler on for a ten ball over? You know, um, I can't see many seamers uh, bowling ten ball overs personally. Um, but you know that that will be a challenge in itself. You know, whether whether you stay on for ten balls or, or you or you rotate your bowlers after after five ball overs. If I if I had to press you on it, especially thinking with it's such a, a short format. Um, if you had to choose one between the two, which do you think is more important, a dot ball or a wicket? Uh, look, I don't look. I think dot balls are, are just as important um, as wickets. But I think at the end of the day, you need to you need to keep taking wickets to to be on top of the game. Um, so yeah, look, I think I think they're both vital. Obviously, you need to take wickets to to win our to win games of cricket as well. Oh, oh, wicket. yeah. Wickets. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> Oh, that's, so we'll go with wickets. Go with wickets. wickets. Well, that's good. I'm glad we pinned you down on an answer. <laughs> Guys, we all, all know that obviously the Northern Superchargers are, are going to win. We know that. Um, but Lauren, who do you think are the, the stiff competition? Who's the team to beat? Ooh. I think the Southern Brave are strong. Um, well, they certainly look strong on paper. Their batting looks strong on paper. Um, who else? I think London Spirit will be will be a decent team as well. Um, but yeah, like then you look at Manchester Originals; they've got fight. Like I think, honestly, it's so hard to call who's going to give you who's going to give you a biggest run for your money because I think there's like there's there's players to watch in every team. Um, but I would say I think the Southern Braves batting particularly looks looks pretty strong. And Bryden, what about you with the men's with the men's teams? Is there a team that you think look particularly strong? Yeah, look, obviously all the teams have got good players. Um, I think the Manchester team has got a very good side on paper. Um, so you know, that's just off the top of my head. That's a team that I'm, you know, would be quite wary of. Um, but yeah, look, um, the Northern Superchargers, I think, have got all uh, bases covered. So so I'm going with with my home team. <laughs> good choice <laughs> good wouldn't expect any different um but obviously one of the big onuses in the hundred is the uh, is the platform that it's uh, one team with two squads um going into that do you see that there might be uh, potential for you guys training together in the nets um uh, lauren do you fancy uh, fancy taking on brian in the nets <laughs> no i don't i'm not gonna lie um <laughs> I think a lot of it, though, I think that's the good thing is that, like, I know that the players are staying in the same hotels, the venues are the same for training. Like, for us, um, to be having training sessions at Headingley consistently with, obviously, the men either coming in before or after us is, is so important. I think that's the biggest, the biggest thing is that we're playing on good wickets, we're training on good wickets. Um, and it's really exciting to, yeah, like we, ha you sort of get a bit of a feel for that in the Big Bash, um, but you're not around sort of the men's team that much. Um, so I think this is going to be this first tournament where you have that real feel of, like you say, it's, it's one team, um, culture and mentality. And I think that's so important for, for both the men and the women. Uh, I mean, I, I, I totally agree. And I for me personally, I think that's one of the best things about the hundred um, is this this idea that it is it's for everybody in in all gamuts. But um, one of the things that I was thinking down the line because I know it's the same. I play village cricket to a fairly terrible standard, but um, we very regularly have mixed gender um, matches and sort of. I just sort of thought down the line, do you think that it sees a possibility maybe uh, a bit further down the line that we might even see mixed gendered matches? I hope so. I think that, I mean, that, that would take me back to my childhood. I spent all my childhood playing boys cricket, men's cricket. Um, and I like, I would encourage that to any young girl playing cricket that it, it developed me, it helped me. I loved it. Um, I think the boys loved having having me on the team too because it was it was always like you're the you're the team with the girl on, um, and you were different for the other teams in the league. So yeah, I think so. I think you know the the gaps closing all the time. We play a lot of warm up games and sort of internal games with the boys academy at Yorkshire. Um, same with with England stuff. We often play against. Um, some of the boys, you know, the academy teams and the men's teams around the county circuit. So I think the gap's closing. Um, 
I think it'll be a little while off before we see, you know, properly mixed teams um, at this level anyway. But I, I certainly think it's something that's, you know, it, it develops both the girls and the boys um, so much more. So I think it'd be a shame if we lost that. Yeah, and same question to you, Bryden. Yeah, look, definitely. I think, um, you know, something that I've noticed uh, massively, you know, since living in the UK now for seven years and, and being associated with a few local clubs and, and helping out coaching and that is, is the amount of uh, mixed gender at young age groups, you know, boys playing with girls and, and interacting with each other. So, uh, look, I think something, you know, going forward, like Lauren said, I think... I think the gap is definitely closing um, and I think it's something that, you know, in the future could be a possibility and, and I think it would be great, you know, for, for men and for women's cricket. Amazing. Well, finally, guys, um, you know, the 100 has faced its fair share of criticism and it has been a long time starting. Lauren, do you think that this competition is going to be a success going forward and what do you think are the positives that could come out of it? I think it's like anything, everyone's afraid of something different, like, and no, everyone's afraid of change. And I think that's why the 100 got a really bad rap was because it was like, oh, it's different. And I think that's just sort of like human nature to to not like the unknown. Um, I just think it's going to be, it's all the razzmatazz, it's the, it's the kit, it's the men and women together, it's the music stars, it's, you know, I think it's going to be genuine, exciting entertainment, I think. As well, like the obviously the pandemic, people are absolutely chomping at the bit to watch sport. I think the timing of it, although it was a shame for it to, to not go ahead last year, I think people are even more hungry for it this year. Um, and like, you know, it's going to reach a new audience. You've got things that's happening with, you know, with Sky, with animations and things like that, where it's going to be, it's going to be different. It's going to be exciting. Kids are going to love it. Adults are going to love it. We're going to love it as players. Um, and yeah, I really do think that um, once that the games get you know underway and, and you see the, the performances and the entertainment, then people's minds will definitely be changed. Well, we for sure can't wait for it to start next week. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. The best of luck with the competition and we'll be rooting for you in the Northern Superchargers for sure. Cheers, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thanks a Cheers. lot. Wow, that was really, actually really lovely. It's strange because that's the first time we've had two people on the, uh, on the show together. Um, but it was actually yeah. really lovely. We could bounce off everybody. I love the fact that we had um, a representative from both the men's and the women's squad because they really are enforcing that one team, two squad policy. And hopefully we'll have some more to come. But it's difficult when my allegiances are with a different team. I'm so excited for them now. We've spoken to them, but I really want them to do well in the competition as well. Yeah, it was it was the same for me, um, and yeah, it, it's so hard. It's like you said, there's there's players that I like on every single squad, and uh, yeah, we were so fortunate to get um, Lauren and Bryden on the on the on the show. Well, obviously there have been more squad changes. Um, I'm sure you've been keeping up, but the big one is Andre Russell is no longer with the Southern Braves. Uh, he's been replaced by Colin de Grandom. Um, yeah, I, I know that you would be uh, a little bit bummed out by that one. You know what? I am such a fan of Andre Russell, the Dre Russ. You can't beat him. And he's so great in any franchise um, team. And I think that Colin de Grandhomme is obviously an amazing all-rounder as well. He does really, really well. Um, it is kind of like for light, but I just have something about Dre Russ. I just think that he's a way more powerful hitter. Um, potentially, I think Colin de Grandhomme might do better with the ball than Dre Russ in recent times but I think in terms of the batting I was excited to see him but that's a great switch. I, I think so too. Uh, in other news uh, New Zealand's Glenn Phillips uh, is now completely replacing Karen Pollard uh, who is uh, recovering from injury. Um, so I mean we touched on that in the last episode but again, at least this just sort of gives it a bit more solidity. Um, and the last but not least for the men's squads is that Marshawn Delange has come in to replace Wahab Riaz because Wahab Riaz apparently has had visa issues coming into the UK. So <laughs> it never rains, it pours, you know, as far as the selections, does it? I mean, you'd think that the ECB would be able to kind of, you know, get him in <laughs> for this competition with all their contacts going forward. Uh, a couple more from the women's squad. Obviously, we know Elise Perry is no longer playing. She has actually been released now by, um, uh, well, replaced by Katie Mack. 
Um, so that's the Birmingham Phoenix now with their complement of players. And Hayley Matthews has signed for Welsh Fire um, because South Africa's Sunay Lewis, who came in to replace Meg Lanning, um, tested positive for COVID and is unable to travel. So this is just an example of the crazy pandemic world we live in. And I think we should just assume that nothing is set in stone and everything can change, as we saw with the ODI series uh, with the men. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be bad, because as the 3-0 scoreline suggested, it's pretty good. Um, but obviously, we're going to get more and more interviews, and we're going to be doing this quite a lot over the next few weeks, because the match is, well, the, the tournament is going to start in just under a week and um, so again if you want to keep up and you want to be the first to get our content and hear our thoughts uh like and subscribe below and again follow us on twitter at 100 report and on instagram at the 100 report and send us your questions send us your thoughts because if you've got a particular question you want to ask one of the players then why not throw it to us because then we'll be more than happy to facilitate um but anyway that's enough for me i'll stop yammering i'll uh, speak to you soon bye from me bye Thank you.